editing cinematic long-form content or editing short-form content that has the potential to go viral is not as hard as you might think. It can be done easily on a smartphone, but of course, it can also be done on a computer. In this video, I'll share with you my five-step process that I'm following every time whenever I'm editing videos. The app that we will be using is the app CapCut. It's a free app and it does also work on computers, which is a surprising high amount of people don't know. So in case that's interesting for you, definitely make sure to stick till the end because all of the five steps that I'm following are absolutely essential. Let's get started. Now what's going on everybody in case you're new here welcome super glad to have you my name is julian i'm the creator of smartphone filmmaking pro and on this channel we talk about making better videos mainly just using our smartphone in case that's interesting to you make sure you hit that subscribe button before we will hop into CapCut, i would like to cover two basics that in my opinion every video has to follow in some way shape or form to have the potential to go viral on social media or overall just to be an interesting video for for your viewer and first of all that is your video should tell a story in some way shape or form it's not necessary that you have a talking head or that you have a voiceover where someone is you know actually talking but in some way your video should definitely tell a story because otherwise you have just random clips stuck together and that's just not interesting for the viewer that's the first thing and secondly make sure that your videos are as short as possible and as long as necessary what do i mean by that well if the entire story that you would like to tell basically is just like this long but your entire video is that long then the video gets boring on the other hand if you're trying to explain a very difficult story or a very difficult topic and your video is only that long then people will be overwhelmed and they will not be able to you know truly understand what you're trying to tell so as i've mentioned before make sure that your video is as short as possible but as long as needed but now i would say let's hop into CapCut and let's start with the five-step process all right so welcome to the desktop version of CapCut. Like I've mentioned before, many people do not know that CapCut also offers a free desktop version. And basically this is very, very similar to the mobile version, but it just offers a few different, you know, opportunities and overall it just works a tiny bit different but overall i gotta admit i love working on the desktop version because i just have more screen real estate and overall it's just a very nice experience and by the way if you would like to learn everything about CapCut, we have just launched a CapCut master class where we're teaching everything we know on how you can edit viral and cinematic videos inside of CapCut in the desktop version but also on the smartphone then make sure to click the first link below that like button that will bring you to our sign up page to our CapCut master class we already had over 400 people join the course so yeah definitely make sure to give that a shot so the first step in the process of making high quality cinematic viral videos is that you have the right settings and of course the right settings depend on the type of video that you would like to create but for example if we wanted to make a 16 by 9 youtube video then i would go down here to ratio and make sure that i have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and another setting that is very important is right here at the top right and that is the frame rate i see this very often um, when people are filming in 16 frames per second and they import their clip into the timeline down here that the entire timeline is a 60 frames per second timeline and there is nothing wrong with a 60 frames per second timeline but all your clips have to be 60 frames and you also need to export your clip at 60 frames and you just get a very specific look so what i would recommend for like 95 percent of all of the content that you might be creating is i would recommend that you have a 25 or 24 frames per second timeline and the color space should always be standard dynamic range rec 709 i would not recommend to edit in hdr i know this can look great and especially if you watch your video on your smartphone it looks spectacular but by the time you start sharing the videos on social media usually you will run into some issues um, if this is not looking like this then you can get, just go up here to cap cut settings and this is where you could change that go over to edit it. and here you can see the frame rate you can also see the time code down here and yeah here you just have a bunch of different settings but what's the most important in my opinion is the frame rate right here and like i said before depending on how you shot your video i would recommend to keep this at 24 25 or maximum 30 frames per second sometimes yes i'm also editing in a 50 or 60 frames per second timeline but this is just for a very specific reason by the time you've changed that just click on save right here and then you can see it has taken over all the settings that you put in of of course it is also very important that you 
film your videos correctly and that you also film those with the right settings but we won't cover this in this specific video right here if you're interested in that then make sure to click the video at the top the second step in the process is having a nice color grade and nice looking colors in your image and this is something that's very important and that gets very often overlooked by beginners and this is you know this shot here that you can see this is shot on the galaxy s23 ultra and this is just straight out of camera and it does already look pretty good i would say but it's just nothing special here going on you know the colors are, are not super vibrant it's quite contrasty yes but overall it's just a bit flat in my opinion i like my images to pop and to stand out so what we're gonna do is just select the clip down here and usually you will be in you know this part of the program right here but just hop over here to adjustments and here is where you can color grade your videos and overall if you have some experience then this will be super simple but also if not then yeah it will also be basically pretty simple the first thing that i always like to apply to my images is a lot and a lot basically stands for look up table and this is sort of like a drag and drop color grading filter like you can see them on instagram for example inside of the CapCut masterclass we provide our signature series lot pack but i'm also providing one lot for free i will also link that down below and yeah this is basically this one this is the instagram sfp lot and basically all we gotta do just select that you can already see what it doing just select that really quick and as you can see now we already have in my opinion a more cinematic image the thing what this does it is this is basically a teal and orange lot that means the oranges and also the blues you know it, it you just get more color contrast basically and i like to get this as a basis for my color grading and then i'm just going down here to my adjustments and then I'm just going down from here. When it comes to temperature, hue, saturation, I think the temperature looks pretty fine. Also, the hue is not off, but I like to add more saturation to my image. Yes, yeah, something like this, 18, 20, something like this. That looks pretty good. Also, when it comes to the exposure, when it comes to the brightness, I think this image is pretty evenly lit. And yeah, I think there, that looks pretty good. But as I've mentioned before, I also like to add some contrast to my images just to make it pop even a bit more. Maybe I'll try to bring the highlights down here just a little bit, bring up the shadows also ever so slightly, something like this. Um, yeah, and that's basically pretty much all that I'm doing. I don't like to sharpen my image. I don't like to bring particles or fade. Yeah, I'm basically not using these things down here. And you could also add a vignette if you wanted to. If you're going um, to the right, then you can see the edges here turn black and if you're going the opposite direction and you can see it goes white yeah sometimes i maybe add this just a tiny bit to draw the attention to the center but most of the times i'm just not so this is basically my process that i'm going yeah that i'm taking basically and if you're happy with your color grade and if you shot a bunch of clips in the same area then CapCut has a cool feature just click on apply to all and now all of your clips have the exact same color grade that you have already applied if it's too extreme for some clips or if it's not working if the highlights here for example are too bright then i'm just going here turn the brightness down maybe a little bit highlights even more and yeah something like this maybe and then also this um, clip also looks very good so this is definitely very cool to speed up the entire color grading process the next step in the process is to add speed ramps and transitions to your videos and the goal of this is also to just make the video overall just a bit more interesting for your viewers. Inside of CapCut if you have two different clips like I have right here and they just don't match like really nice together, I'll just trim that clip here very quickly. There's one opportunity that you have inside of CapCut is at the top left here if you go to transitions then you have a bunch like a plenty of different options that CapCut is providing you. You can see some some of them are only in the pro version and some of them are also in the free version available and basically you just gotta like decide what fits best for your specific transition that you have right here and yeah, i will just try this uh, glitch one right here and basically all you gotta do just take it and drag it down to your timeline to the clips that you want and now let's see how this looks 
yeah and then you have a glitch transition like this i think this looks actually pretty good and you can definitely use that for certain scenarios one thing that i personally like more than using these kinds of transitions is to already shoot my transitions in camera basically you can do this by a whip pen transition um, also full review or, or full tutorial on how you can do this is on the channel i will also link that one up there but basically how this works is you have one shot and you end it with a whip to the right in this case and then you have a second shot that starts off with a whip to the right and if you play it back then you get a seamless transition like this and as you can see i do not have any transitions here from cap cut we could also add like uh, you know something like this to make it even a bit smoother yeah i don't know which one might fit maybe that one let's see yeah, maybe that's a bit too much, but I think you get the picture. You could use these. Um, and overall, this is just very handy to make your video just look more interesting. And as I've mentioned before, another thing that I also like to add to my videos is a speed ramp. And in CapCut, that also works super fine, super fast. Just select the clip where you want to add the speed ramp. And at the top here, just go to, no, not to video, go to speed. And then you can see you can just change the entire um, or the overall speed of the entire video or go over here to curve. And then you can see you have a bunch of different presets. For example, um, um, yeah, let's see that one, for example. And you can basically see like this, what you can see here, this represents the entire length of the video. And the further up this is, um, the, the, the faster the pace, and the further down it is, the slower the pace. So if we play that back, you can see it starts slow, then it speeds up and slows back down. So yeah, you could definitely use something like this, some of these presets, just click on them and you will see um, what it does to the image. Or you can also customize this. You could say like, I wanna start off super fast. Also take that one up there, but then I wanna slow my clip down and yeah, something like this. Let's see how that looks. You start off fast, slows down. Um, yeah, I think you basically get the picture. The more of these kinds of speed ramps and transitions you add to your image, the overall, you know, the more interesting it looks visually speaking. The next step that is also super important and this step very often gets overlooked by beginners. And this is the entire audio of your video. And basically what I'm talking about is, of course, the spoken audio, if you have some, this should be clear and so on, but also just adding music and sound effects to your image. It. especially if you have you know some city videos like i have right here or you know all of these videos or where you have water and boats and whatever it is just very important that people can hear what they can see this just makes a night and day difference or also here for example with this shot you can see a bunch of people and there's a church so maybe add some bells there or you know like like we have in this example here there's a boat going so definitely make sure that you can hear the engine of that boat or again here with a, a crowded space or a car maybe or something make sure that you add these kinds of sound effects to your image and if you compare um, a, a sequence where you not have any sound effects and then with the sound effects in my opinion this is a night and day difference inside of CapCut, you have a bunch of different options on how you can add um, sound effects and also music at the top here just go to audio and then you can see you have music and sound effects and here basically you can access the TikTok library I will not play any of the any of the sound right here because I'm not sure which of these are copyright free or not. But CapCut also has a feature where you can actually check and where it tells you like, yes, you can use that for commercial purposes or just for personal purposes. So um, yeah, basically you will get this check right here and you can also check it before exporting the video. But for example, if you found a video that you like or a, a music, um, basically you just take it, drag it down to your timeline and then you can see it already works. And the same thing also goes for sound effects. So you can also search for different things. So let's say, I don't know, water or something like this. And you can see you have environmental sound, the sound of boiling water on a bonfire. That, for example, that would not be the right one. Um, drinking water, pouring water. So basically just go through them. There you have a waterfall. And then if you found something that works for you, animal, birds, insects, plants, trees, for example, this one, then just drag it down into the timeline. And this is basically how you're building up the entire video and how you make everything that you can see also audible. In this case here, for example, with, um, with this shot, they can also hear a cyclist going by and the water. And yeah, the more effort you put into this, 
the more complex our timeline will look, but overall this will make a massive, massive difference in the final outcome of your video. And last but not least, step five is to add some minor things to your videos. And what I mean by that is, you know, it very much depends on what kind of video you're making. But for example, let's say you wanted to make a cinematic um, city video. Then something that I like to do is I always like to add a cinemascope to my video. This works super simple in CapCut. This cinemascope basically adds these letter boxes to my video. And in my opinion, overall, this just has a much more cinematic feeling and look compared to not having this so in my opinion if you compare this shot um, with the same shot with the cinemascope i just love the feeling some of you might hate it and might be saying like i'm wasting all that screen real estate I totally understand that as well. But as mentioned before, this is something that I personally like to do with my long form content. If I have short form content, for example, with spoken audio, and for example, let's say I wanted to just make a um, vertical video out of this, then I could go into here and go down to nine by 16, change the aspect ratio. And now you can see the entire black frame that we had is just gone. I'll now delete just everything else that we have already have here. I'll shorten that real quick. And for short form content, for example, one thing that is absolutely essential in my opinion is to have subtitles. And in CapCut, this also works super simple and is basically automated, which is super cool. Just go here to text and then you can see this is what it looks like. You have a default text that's a bit lame. Then you have a bunch of different effects. You have text templates where you have animations and so on, and you can use that but below here you have auto captions, then basically all you gotta do is select the language that you have. In my case, I have been using English, um, and then basically just to click on create, and now it's creating the auto captions in the background, it's analyzing the clip, it's going through it, and as you can see in real time, this has already been gone. Basically it works super, super fine, and yeah, you can split up the text as you wanted. You can um, yeah, add uh, different fonts, different styles, different sizes. And yeah, there are plenty of different options. But if this is something that you're interested in, then make sure to click this video over there because there I have been documenting the entire process and how I have been editing, you know, a viral short form content with this Alex Hermosi style subtitles. So if that's interesting, again, click that video up there. So there you have it, guys. This is my five step process that I'm following every time when I'm making videos. And I think this gives you a very, very good starting point when it comes to editing high quality or potentially viral videos on your smartphone or on your computer. Basically everything that I have covered here in this video works pretty much exactly the same way also on your smartphone. As I've mentioned before, CapCut is a very versatile app, works on iPhones, on Macs, on Windows computers, on Android phones, and yeah, basically everywhere. And as I've mentioned before, we have just launched our CapCut Masterclass. You can see that down here. Super proud on this product. Um, like I said, we have already a couple of hundred members and this is pretty much the ultimate guide to editing high quality viral cinematic videos in the fastest and easiest way possible. If you like my teaching style, then definitely make sure to check it out. I will link it down below. Also, huge thanks to CapCut for supporting the channel, for sponsoring this video. Um, yeah, but that's it for this video. Very much hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.